Hello again, and welcome to A Call with Dr. Cook. Today is uh, Wednesday, September 29th, and Dr. Cook, we're glad that you're here again. This is uh, exciting to go through part we're three again, of George. emotions. I know, it's it's fun stuff. Yeah. It's, uh, there's there's so many fun things that, that we hear from, from our people out, the customers that are using Limbic Arc. It's such an exciting time, but I'm really excited to wrap this up um, and to get a little bit more information on emotions. So anyway, we welcome all of you here. We're, we're glad that you're here. For those who are listening live, we're, we're glad that you're here. And for those who are listening by recording, um, just know that uh, there are lots of great recordings of these calls with Dr. Cook, and you can go back through those at any time. But um, Dr. Cook, to start things off, there are some exciting new things for Limbic Arc that have come out in the past few days. Yes, there are, George. Uh, let me go down this list really quick. We've okay. got uh, the uh, the rating system. We've uh, eliminated that. And I okay. can explain what it was, but it's not there anymore, so it may not be important. That um, was, well, that was when you were done with an info boost, you would rate it. And so now it just, it moves you through very quickly. So it's a, a, right. a little easier user experience. Uh, you now have the ability to reactivate an info boost uh, when it's been completed, the way you would do that is, let's say I set an info boost up to run three days, and at the end of three days, I think, wow, I like this one. I want to do it again. There's a reactivate button. You just push and and turns it right back on for you. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, and a big one is the uh, info boost scheduling. We've had uh, over the the years a request for people saying, I'd like to be able to turn the energy boost on in the morning and the calm or the sleep info boost on. For a little while in the evening, uh, we built in a scheduling piece, and uh, you can now turn them on and off. I mean, you can tell the tell the computer when to turn them on and off. Oh, and in addition to that, we've added one extra info boost slot, so you now have the possibility of four info boosts. The idea behind that is you may need one for, say, the energy boost in the morning, and another one for the calm in the evening. Um, and that'll take up two of the slots, and that would then leave you with two info boosts uh, available all oh, the time. I, um, you know, that's something that people have been requesting, Dr. Cook. I'm, I'm sure that there'll be a lot of people excited about that new feature. Yeah, you know, you don't want to go hog wild, I don't think, and turn on, you know, the whole world as an info boost, but, uh, uh, but it gives you more flexibility. So, yeah, I agree. It's going to be fun. And then uh, we've got the last one here, uh, ingredient benefits. We put in a new tagging system for ingredients. It will make them searchable. So if you said, I want all the ingredients that have a known impact on cardiovascular, you could type in the search cardiovascular and it will bring up the list of all those things. That's not completed yet because we've got to do the, the, uh, the what, clerical work on it, but the programmatic work has been done. And so, You'll see that very soon, and and as we get it done, we'll we'll make we'll let you know what when it's happening here. But it should well, happen. we will we'll, we'll send out an announcement for sure when that's up and yeah. ready. But it's it's so great. I I think that a lot of people, including myself, learn a lot when I take a look and start to research what's coming up on my Spark scans, and it's just really helpful to have that information. So, yeah, it'll make it. Uh, I think it'll make Limbic Arc more. Uh, User friendly and more functional. Well, that's well, Dr. Cook. I we've talked about it a little bit already, but um, today is part three of emotions, and um, I, I know that there's been a lot of talk about emotions. I know that there's been uh, a lot of things that have been said and, and things that we're working on actively. But tell me a little bit, Dr. Cook, why why are emotions why is limbic arc so effective with emotions, and and why is it that frontier that we're pushing on right now. Well, is that a segue into my presentation? <laughs> yes, it is. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me, uh, let me share my screen. And as soon as Scott doesn't, there we go. Here we go. Scott had to turn his off and now I'll turn mine on. I think it'll work. Isn't this great? Technology is amazing. It actually is. Okay, so I see that. Go. That's popped right up, so that's great. Okay. 
Well, we're going to talk about emotions, and let me start with our normal disclaimer. I don't have a slide um, with the disclaimer in it, but remember, Limbic Arc is not a medical device. We're, we don't intend, and it's not designed to diagnose or treat any medical condition. It's a wellness tool, and it's designed to improve the quality of life. Right. And emotions certainly have something to do with your quality of life, so let's get started. Uh, here's the triad of health. Some of this is by review because we've talked about this now. This is our yes. third, uh, third go-round with emotions. And, George, as you know, we've got the, uh, this emotion piece being built by our developers now. Our expectation is that we will launch that by the end of next month. And so I would expect that it's very likely that the next call we have, uh, it will be a preview and maybe we'll go into some depth uh, as to what's available now. So we've got good, exciting things that relate specifically to emotions. And it's it's going to, uh, it changes significantly some of the functionality we, we get out of Olympic Arc. So anyway. Well, um, well let's. This triad of health, Dr. Cook, is so important to see how emotions tie in with everything. So I, 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 I love that we're we're going back and reviewing this. Well, we know that emotions are a common element of the human experience, and uh, healthy emotions are ones that are transient. Uh, they come and go as it's appropriate. Uh, sometimes uh, they get stuck. And we end up living uh, with uh, emotions that can check in, but or they can check out, but can't ever leave. And these become body memories. We essentially store them in different places of our body. It's not just in your brain. And we know that a good way to determine uh, or identify these uh, emotions that are stuck uh, is through voice energy. And that's because it takes your entire anatomy to make voice. Uh, and so when you engage your vocal zone, as shown on this slide, uh, you're bringing out emotions that relate to whatever topic you're speaking of. Uh, we've talked in the past about voice being topic specific. When you talk about uh, one person, your voice energy is actually different than when you talk about another person because your memories and experience and perceptions of those people will be different. You know, and, you opened my well, eyes to that, Dr. Cook, and, and now I can't not see it. When I, when I hear, when I talk about other people, even within myself, it's amazing how that's been kind of an enlightening thing for me personally. Yeah, well, and you can, I think individually we notice it because our, our feelings change. I mean, you can actually feel. Dr. Cook, I've lost, uh, I've lost your speak, your audio there. Let's see. I'm still. Let's see. It's still not coming through. I can see that uh, your mouth is moving, but I'm not hearing anything. Okay. Can you hear that? There we go. There we go. Got you. You know, we I, I know in past calls, sometimes my computer jumps from one mic to another. And uh, anyway, it's good to be back. <laughs> oh, well, it's a, hey, this is a miracle that we're even doing this. It, it still blows my mind that technology has allowed this to happen. So, Well, we'll keep going. But you were talking about how, uh, you know, different, you, you, it changes, the, the, your voice changes when you're talking to different people. Well, and it can be measured. Here's the, uh, the slide we're seeing now. You can see the... Uh, the picture in the middle with the 12 numbers around it, those are called zones. This is, we call this a perception index or a voice map or a vocal map. And it's very similar to what we use with Limbic Arc, which is shown in the little circle there. With, the, with this new um, enhancement of the Limbic Arc app, we're actually leaning now, uh, we're, we're implementing, I should say, the vocal map more specifically and so these uh, each of these zones relates to a different uh, emotion or a different perception and these are uh, what shows up so let's say for example that 
uh, you talk about something and you have a lot of excess energy, well, in this case, you can see it in zone 10. There's where the red, the, uh, red zone is. Well, zone 10 has to do with uh, a perception of being unworthy or undeserving. Okay. And, and, uh, I don't, I'm not going to explain that in a lot of detail, but if, if, for example, I was talking about financial success and what comes up is a hot zone 10, what that tells me is I have a subconscious perception that I'm not worthy or I don't deserve financial success. And so what happens is we become our own worst enemy mm -hmm. uh, because if I, I I get close to achieving financial success, my subconscious mind will say, hey, you're not worthy of this. And and what you find is uh, things around you that relate to your financial success will just somehow disintegrate. And you say, oh, I would have been rich except blah, blah, blah. And so we blame it on some external thing. But in fact, what's happening is unknowingly we are sabotaging ourselves. And so what you want to do is you don't want to have stuck energy in any one of these zones. There's no moral value in this. You know, if you feel unworthy or undeserving, there are times when you should feel that way. But uh, if you feel that way all the time about any particular topic, you've got a, a problem because stuck energy is bad energy just by definition. Now, underneath all of these 12 zones, there are the more common emotions. And, and what we have done with our new, with this new iteration of the limbic arc is we've correlated all of this stuff. And so it's, it's going to be fun. We, we've, we're making a lot of connections and bringing a lot of library items in to help move uh, energy that might be stuck to move perceptions, to move emotions that might be stuck. And there we are. We've got our, our uh, model and with the, uh, with the problems, because if they get checked in and can't check out, you got a problem. So let's talk about one of those emotions. Let's talk about fear. Okay. Uh, what we know about fear is that it will impact uh, the kidney meridian. Now, the kidney meridian starts on your foot. It's at, the kidney one is actually at the bottom of your foot, and it moves up your leg, and then it, um, it it goes internal and then it reemerges there just above the pubic bone and it ends just above her collarbones there at the top. Uh, the other thing uh, that we know is if somebody has a problem with their kidney meridian, there's lots of ways you can deal with that. And here are some of those. Some of those would include uh, some acupuncture points. And you can put needles in those points, and you can see that, um, well, I, I put the pencil there. You see the pencil eraser towards right. spleen six. That's, that actually, that's what the point is, SP6. Okay. You can actually uh, treat acupuncture points with acupressure. And an easy way to do that is to take a pencil or something that has about the diameter of an eraser, and you can just kind of work the point and it will stimulate the point and you get not quite as a dramatic effect as you do with needles, but you get a significant effect. So that's just a, that's just a little self-help trick. And then okay. you can see below the acupuncture points, we've got different herbs and different vitamins and you've got different foods, things you can eat. And if somebody had a kidney meridian issue, any of these would be appropriate uh, or may be appropriate. If somebody has a, a physiological problem with their kidneys, uh, these would be appropriate as well. But again, we're not, that's not our approach with limbic arc. I just mentioned that because the items that we put in the library have a known impact on life's functions because right. life's functions impact quality of life. Uh, the next, uh, area that fear will impact is the urinary bladder meridian. The kidney is uh, linked, so they're paired. The urinary bladder meridian and the kidney meridian are paired meridians. Urinary bladder is the yang side of that. Kidney is the yin side of that. That may be more information than you want. But the bladder meridian starts on the small toe on the outside, and it moves up the back of the leg, and it goes up the back over the top of the head and uh, ends 
just there, the uh, inside of the eye, the inner canthus of the eye there. Uh, if you have a problem with fear, you're going to impact things along this energy pathway. And one of the significant things about the urinary bladder meridian, you see all those dots on her back, those are acupuncture yeah. points, but those are called back shoe points, they're trigger points, and they relate to various organs of the body. And so the urinary bladder meridian not only impacts the spine in a significant way, but it impacts pretty much everything in your body. So, you know, fear has, has an impact there. Now, here are some of the things that you can use to treat uh, urinary bladder issues. So you've got certain acupuncture points. You've also got, again, herbs or, or food or vitamins. So, so I've addition, always heard people say that they get so scared that they wet their pants. And, well, you know, let, and, and let me go back because you, you bring up an interesting point. Uh, sometimes you get people who get so afraid that their knees buckle and they fall down. Right. Well, if you look at the, here's the urinary bladder meridian and the kidney meridian runs across the knee as well. And if you lose energy at that point, you can lose strength in your, in your knees and boom, you go down. And the same thing happens, you know, urinary bladder is obviously connected with the bladder. So you get so afraid, you pee your pants. Uh, that's, it makes sense. Wow. Um, the, the other area that fear will impact is different chakras. Now, here are the 12 chakras. There's a couple of different systems for chakras. One is the seven chakras. That's the, probably the most common, but the 12 chakra system is actually the one we're keying on with limbic art. And fear will impact the first and second chakras. And there are things that you can use to help uh, tonify or balance those two chakras. And here are some of those things. So again, we've got food. We've also got uh, some essential oils. And we've got minerals that go with chakras. And that brings us back to this triad of health, because we know from our past discussions that anything that impacts any of any side will also impact the other two sides because our body is built in a way that uh, life is a process and that process touches or impacts every one of those areas for lots of reasons. So here is um, this vocal map and this is the one we're familiar with with limbic arc and you'll recognize the similarity and and so these areas impact uh that will be we're actually what i'm trying to say george is limbic arc is built to record this data we're already getting the data we're just not using it but we're going to use it in a more uh, direct way with this new application so let's say that you show up with uh, hot zones in conditional love or suppressed emotional expression conflicting beliefs, and it shows up that you've got stuck energy or stuck emotions in those areas. You'll notice that I've got Santa Claus here stuck in the chimney. Uh, yeah. It's If you have stuck energy, it doesn't make you a good or a bad person. And sometimes people will look at these and they think, oh, well, if I've got this, let's say I'm undeserving or unworthy, well, is you know, does that make me a bad person? No, it doesn't make you a bad person. It's just that's where your energy's stuck. And so no matter where your energy's stuck, it's a problem, but it has no moral value carried, that's carried with it. The idea is we want to balance these things. Whoops, got a little trigger happy there. And uh, we want to get Santa Claus unstuck. Okay. And when those emotions are unstuck and they're flowing the way they're supposed to flow, life is good. We improve our quality of life. You know, so back to limbic arc directly, we know that we're, we're working with information. And information is what is conveyed by an arrangement of things. And the arrangement of things that limbic arc deals with is computer information that is stored in a database in the cloud. And that information uh, is representative of physical items or even imponderables that 
uh, relate to things that you'll encounter in the world, like a vitamin, as an example. And then we take uh, the Spark scan and we run that scan and score all of those items. You're then able to select the ones that you want to influence you. And when you activate the Spark or activate the Info Boost, then that information on the of the items that you have selected through what is called a field effect will then impact you at an energetic level and that in turn will have positive impacts on the other aspects of your body including the unstucking of emotional <laughs> energy and life becomes better and Un unstucking is a great word that is I th that'll be easy to translate too <laughs> uh, here's my last slide, and so I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and there we go. We are back. Well, you know, Dr. Cook, the thing that's, that's, um, that's amazing for me is the deeper meanings, because I really get the sense that as you talk about some of these topics, we're just really scratching the surface. When, when you start talking about the meridians, when you start talking about the products and how it all works together, it just feels like there's just a wealth of information underneath the surface that we're talking about. Well, I think the important thing too, George, is that um, limbic arc is a fairly spacey technology. I mean, it's hard for, I can appreciate that it's hard for some people to get their brains around and they look at it and say, come on, this, this can't possibly be legitimate. But when you consider the the connectivity that exists in us, mm -hmm. you know, the, this triad of health and the subtleties that are involved and the impacts that, you know, things have on us that we're just so oblivious to. Uh, when you consider all of that, limbic arc actually becomes pretty mundane. And uh, the fact that it works is just not surprising at all. Well, it just makes so much sense. And it's funny because as you talk about things, it's like, I, I I totally get it now. That makes sense to me. And uh, anyway, I'm I, I appreciate that. Thank you, Doctor Cook. I am looking forward to the info boost that will be coming out for emotions. I'm I, I can't wait. So well, it's more than um, just an info boost. It's a programmatic change. It's gonna it, it it's gonna add some functionality we've never had. Oh, that uh, that is even better. So, yeah. Dr. Cook, we've got a couple of questions to ask, and, and I know that you've addressed them a little bit as I look down the list, but um, um, here's here's why. And, and if you have questions, please submit them to askdrcook at limbicarc.com. We'd love to answer your questions. We can't get to all of them, but here are a few that are relevant for today. Um, Dr. Cook, in the past, you've talked about an overload and its effects with the new update to the web app. Um, should I be concerned about running you know, three info boosts or even four info boosts, is that going to be too much? Uh, I think it could be. And I think, again, I, I tend to be a little cautious. I don't tend to put a lot of things in an info boost, a lot of ingredients. And I say that, you know, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But as a rule, I don't. But the reason we've got four is because with this new scheduling item, uh, that may lock up two of those positions for you. And if it does, then you've got two that you could run all the time. Uh, again, I would be, you know, be careful. It's just different for different people. If you're really sensitive and you'll know it soon enough, then, then be cautious. If you're not as sensitive and you can run with more ingredients, there's no right or wrong way. It's just whatever works for you, make it work. Okay. Great. Um, let's move on. Um, when I when I run a spark scan, I've noticed that there are boost ingredients listed that I know I'm intolerant to. Um, why are these coming up, and is this something that I should be concerned about? Uh, let me give you a more clinical answer than I might be comfortable with. Uh, but let's say that you came to me in a clinical setting and we determined that you were sensitive to ragweed, ragweed pollen. Okay. One way to treat you is to actually take ragweed pollen and attenuate it, which means to dilute it, 
And if we continue to dilute it at some dilution, we will find that your sensitivity goes away. In other words, you don't react negatively to it. We can then give that to you as a medicine, and over time, you will neutralize your sensitivity to ragweed pollen at any dilution. So what made you sick can actually make you better. If you see something that shows up in a uh, spark scan, and it's a, an item that you know you have a reaction to, uh, two things. One is it may be that the information of that item is helpful to you, even though the physical consumption of that item is not. And so I would not be afraid of putting it into an info boost. Okay. That being said, you may want to be careful with it. For example, you may want to say, oh, this is really interesting. I, I know I react to, you know, milk thistle. So you might want to do an experiment. And, and I would experiment in, the, in this way. I would take milk thistle and I would put it in the info boost as the only item in the info boost. And I'd turn the info boost on and see what effect it had. If it makes me feel okay, then I would not worry about adding other things with it. But if it makes me feel uncomfortable in a way that I'm not comfortable with, in other words, wow, I just really don't like the way I feel, then I would take it out and leave it out. So okay. again, it's that I hope that's a satisfying answer, but but know that you can experiment with limbic art. Uh, it's not, you're, you're not going to damage yourself if you put something in that you know you have a negative reaction to because we're dealing with information here. We're not dealing with the physical, the physical item. Well, and that actually ties into the first question about overload. And, and so I, I like the, the response there to be very cognizant of what's happening and what's going on in your info boost and, and pay attention to yourself. Um, very quickly, there's a third question. Um, how many custom info boosts can I have? Um, what's the purpose of a custom info boost versus the pre-built info boosts? Well, you can have, uh, now you could have four custom info boosts because we, we've got four slots open. Uh, they could all be custom. And the difference is uh, the info boosts that are pre-built contain items that have in the physical world, a known impact on whatever that info boost is named. For example, sleep. The sleep info boost contains items that uh, through research we know if you take them physically, they can have an impact on your sleep. And so we've just aggregated that information, or those items, so that it makes it easy, easy for you to see them. With this new tagging system that we're developing, when we get it finished, will have sleep tagged as one of the benefits on a lot of different things in the library. And if you wanted to create a sleep info boost, you could just do a search on sleep. It would bring all of those up. You can load them into an info boost and away you go. So okay. it's gonna make the, the tool more user friendly. Um, so I'm excited for it. But, okay. but that is the only difference, honestly, George. If, if well, I wanted- a custom info boost on sleep, what I would do is I would talk about sleep. And then what I would get is a scan result that would that would bias the information towards sleep because that's the topic I spoke about. Right. And it might be my sleep info boost as opposed to the generic sleep info boost. So you okay. can think of it that way. Well, and, and, you know, just to clarify that a little bit, Dr. Cook, you can have an unlimited number of custom info boosts. You can, you can have some that you use and, and maybe use them or, or every spring or other, but you can only be actively running four at a time, but right. you can create an unlimited library of info boosts in your Limbic Arc app. Yeah. So, okay. Um, Dr. Cook, what a pleasure. Thank you so much. I, I love the questions and the, the answers are always fun. I, I would just let everybody know that there are, our next call schedule with Dr. Cook is going to be uh, Wednesday, October 27th. We're going to keep the same time, which is 10 o'clock a.m. Mountain Time. 
And um, just just if you if you're struggling or if you want need a little bit of help, you can always reach out to our customer success team. You can find their contact information on the contact us portion of the website. And uh, also know that we will be uh, posting replay links of today's broadcast. You can replay that and you can listen to other copies there. Um, just go to the website and you'll see the call with Dr. Cook link and you can access that or you can always find us on our YouTube channel. So. Um, be sure and remember to sign up for next uh, for a reminder for the next call with Dr. Cook, and uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you for being with us, and we're looking forward to seeing you again next month. Dr. Cook, it was a pleasure again, and thank you so much. It's always fun. See you soon. All right. Bye-bye.